So we just saw the third bank in the United States uh, fail, uh, First Republic Bank. And there was a deal brokered by the FDIC to uh, for the First Republic to sell its assets to JP Morgan, the largest bank in the United States. And the reason for that is when First Republic reported earnings uh, this past uh, few weeks, I think it was about a few weeks ago now, they reported that they lost upwards of $100 billion uh, of deposits of money leaving the bank during the banking crisis in March. And if there wasn't a run on the bank before that, once that news came out, there was even a greater run on the bank. And uh, you can see here, we actually have a chart of First Republic, and you can actually see what happened to, to the bank stock. It really tanked. It was well over $100 a share, and now $3, and today it's, it's worth nothing. And it's unfortunate because in today's age, you know, you can move money from one bank to another or take money out of a bank by hitting a button. Back in the day, you actually had to go to your bank and, and take money out. Today, online banking, money moves so quickly. And that's really what happened with First Republic. Again, when you understand why First Republic, Signature Bank in the US and Silicon Valley Bank, why they had their issues, you understand what happened. You understand that money left the bank to find higher interest rates elsewhere. And the banks can't just increase the interest rates that they pay on their savings accounts because if they pay too much, that eats into their bottom line. The banks need to make money. They need to make money on the spread between what they lend money at and what they pay interest on for the money that they have in their accounts, to your GICs, et cetera. So if they're paying you 5% and they're only charging you a 6% loan, let's say, they're making now 1%. Whereas if they charge a loan of six and they pay you three, they're now pay, making 3%. So a lot of money has left the banks in search for higher yield. And First Republic was no different. The good news is, in my opinion, all the assets or all the deposits are now safe under the arm or the wing of JP Morgan. So JP Morgan now runs the assets and owns those assets, or at least has the assets with them for individual investors. I thought one chart I wanted to show, which is really interesting, uh, we just showed the First Republic, but this is a chart about US bank failures by year adjusted for inflation. And it's quite interesting. If you look at Signature Bank in New York, 110 billion, Silicon Valley Bank, 209 billion, First Republic at one point was $213 billion. Compare that to what happened in 2008, where you had Washington Mutual, the biggest bank failure in history of the United States, 430 billion, and then 24 other banks fail worth 94 billion. These three banks that failed recently are worth more than the banks that failed or were bigger than the 25 banks that failed in 2008. So you can see the magnitude of what's going on. And I'm hopeful that the Fed is watching this because if they are, the hope is that they're not going to raise interest rates, or at least if they're going to raise interest rates today, they'll put a pause right after. So the third bank failure has been one that might have been expected. We knew First Republic was under the gun. The problem I see is that the underlying issue is still there, higher interest rates, interest rates moving higher, possibly again today. That problem still exists for the banks. The problem of individuals taking out their deposits, their, their money from savings accounts, checking accounts, wherever they have their money, and moving into other areas. So. The underlying problem, unfortunately, is still there. Hopefully, the uh, government will continue to backstop these deposits, maybe even increase what they guarantee. In the U.S., it's 250000 In Canada, it's 100000 They can increase that. Hopefully, money will feel comfortable remaining in these regional banks, and we don't see a, a fourth regional bank failure. But for now, it's quite interesting what's happening in the U.S. And uh, as I said uh, on another show, and my radio show, that I don't believe this can come up to Canada. Our banks are very large. Our bank deposits are very sticky, a lot more sticky in the US. We only have a handful of banks that control most of the assets, 80% of the deposits in our country. So what's going on in the US is just because their banks are, there are many more of them than we have up here. We only have less than hundred. So don't think that what I'm saying about the US regional banks is the same for us up here. So going forward, let's see what the Fed says. And hopefully we can get some stability with these regional banks.